Hi everyone. This is Shalini Joshi Yamdagni from MagicalPainFreeLiving.com and uh, welcome to this Facebook Live uh, which is uh, a story I'm going to be uh, sharing with you. It's uh, Reawakening to Chapel Time Wisdom and Uncovering the Root of All Problems. So if you are here, uh, please come in, say hello. Uh, if you are watching this live, welcome. If you're going to be watching this on replay, uh, welcome to you too. And, you know, I have a YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, uh, hi, welcome. Uh, today's topic is reawakening to chapel time wisdom and uncovering the root of all problems. And I just want to take a quick moment right now to thank each and every one of my Facebook family, friends, clients who uh, poured their heart and uh, wished me um, a happy birthday. Uh, it's so wonderful, you know, that Facebook allows us this wonderful opportunity to pour love on whoever's birthday it is, even though we haven't uh, connected for decades, uh, we get to have this chance to tell them we care. So thank you so much for taking time to uh, wish me and greet me. Really, really appreciate it. So uh, if you are here, um, I'm just going to take a quick look and see if this is working on my personal page. Um, if you are here, please uh, come in and let me know you're here. Uh, okay, I'm just seeing if anyone's here because I'm on my business page and I don't know what's uh, going on. So um, anyway, reconnecting, reawakening to chapel time wisdom, that is the story. So if you are here, just come in and say hello as you come in. Please uh, let me know who's here, who's watching. Uh, so I'm going to begin uh, by taking you back to over, um, over a decade. Uh, I'm working at a company here in Thailand. And, uh, you know, my work in this company is to develop training material. So I, you know, I have to develop material uh, for companies so that they can, uh, for like business English, business writing, uh, business communications, that kind of stuff. So I develop material uh, for the companies to train their staff, right? And so um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's exciting because it's new to me. I haven't done this kind of work before. So I'm in this company and I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm um, doing this work. And the thing with this work is that, you know, I'm all the time uh, on the computer with books and resourcing and creating content. So a lot of my life is spent on the computer and there is very little interaction with people right so and uh, my background actually uh, is in psychology and social work so it's a bit frustrating you know spending all your time on computers looking at books and different sites to collect content and create new content and so after three years of doing this you know I start to feel a sense of frustration a sense of like you know, um, it's getting boring. It's not inspiring. Uh, I've, I've just been doing this. And the thing is, I've become good at what I'm doing, but it's, it's not feeling as uh, inspiring anymore. But the good thing about this uh, work, this company, is that I get flexi time. So I'm able to leave my office at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and, uh, you know, come... Uh, and, and go pick up my kids from school. They are about four and five years of age at this time and uh, bring them home. And it was really important for me to, to do that. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I stick at it. I stick at this job and I 
tell myself that, you know, everything else is great in your life. You know, you, you married a guy uh, from school, your childhood sweetheart. Uh, you have great kids. You have great parents. You have uh, a wonderful uh, in-laws. You know, it's the extended family. And it's all great on, you know, otherwise except this job. So just tolerate it, you know, just just uh, stick with it and uh, look at the other people around you. You know, they they're doing, you know, not you know, everyone's in the same boat. And, you know, so just, you know, that's the way life is. You just can't have it all right. You've got to sacrifice. You've got to tolerate uh, some things in life uh, because that's just the way it is. And so I, you know, I just don't pay attention to that. Uh, that feeling of unhappiness and uh, frustration and just, you know, uninspired uh, state of being. And I keep moving forward. And so I find that as I go from day to day, I'm feeling even more frustrated and even more uh, sort of suffocated being there. And from this unhappy state of being in my office, which, which is a big time, right, from 8 to 2 o'clock, I go home and... I can't be the best me with my with my kids because I'm bringing in all this frustrated energy uh, into into their uh, life, into their experience, and uh, I'm you know edgy in my relationships with them. I'm impatient. I'm grumbling. I'm complaining, and uh, and you know that's the way it is. And then you know. Uh, I come back again the next day from work, for work and I feel suffocated and I don't want to be there and I'm trying to be there. And what's happening is my productivity at my office is also going down because I, you know, I just, it's so much harder now to create the content that I want to create. It's so much energy is required. Whereas before it was fun and it was easy and things were flowing and now everything seems harder, you know, and so I keep at it and I just live this way of life. I'm just being this way day to day. And I find that it's getting worse and worse. And my relationship with my kids is like becoming even worse. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm at this job because I want to be able to spend time with my kids and be a good mother and, you know, just have quality time with my kids when they're so small. And I'm ending up uh, being the opposite, right? I'm, I'm, I'm being a monster mother. I'm not even uh, having a quality time and I'm still at this job. And, you know, I had these thoughts that I just want to quit. I want to quit this job. But then I had other fears like who's going to hire me? Who's going to want to hire someone who wants to leave office at two o'clock so she can be with her kids and all that stuff. And so, you know, doubts start to come in, fears start to come in, nobody's interested and uh, nobody's going to want to hire me. And, uh, you know, again, I'm just uh, telling myself, like, look at the other people around you. You know, nobody has it perfect. Nobody has, you know, they're all stressed out and they're all, you know, this is part of life. So, um, so this whole, uh, internal cycle is eating up at me inside every other day and um but you know i i just stick at it and uh, so more and more it's i'm feeling this frustration and this anger and this resentment of being where i don't want to be but on the surface everything looks perfect my life looks perfect on the outside to other people, you know, nobody can tell, like there's this storm brewing. And uh, so this is, this robotic way of being is my life about over a decade ago. And I keep moving forward this way. And one day I go to the gym as I, you know, every day I go to the gym, I go to the office, I pick my kids, I come back home, uh, you know, and then I'm at home, do work after dinner and then sleep and then wake up and take the kids to school, come to the gym. That's the routine. And so today I'm at the gym and I'm doing my abs exercises. I noted that there is a pain in my left rib and I think, oh, okay, I'm, I'm overdoing the exercises. So I'm going to stop and I go to the, uh, go to the office again, the same cycle frustration 
Uh, and but I realized that the pain, you know, is not going away. It's been a day or two, and I haven't been to the gym. And I'm thinking I need to go to the doctor because this pain is not going away, and I can still feel it stronger. So I go to the doctor, and uh, you know, I'm diagnosed with an illness. It's called costochondritis. Uh, it's um, a, it's an inflammation of a ligament that connects the breastbone and the rib bone. And uh, so now I have a disease and I'm in pain. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm giving medicines and hopefully this is going to go away. But a week goes by, two weeks go by and nothing's changing. And uh, I find myself like it's been now months. I've been trying physiotherapy, ultrasound therapy, hot packs, cold packs, rib support, neck belt. And what's happened is by now the pain which was just a pinprick in my left rib is all over my my ribs my upper body and uh, nothing you know nothing seems to be fixing it and uh, I you know I'm, I'm feeling really frustrated because uh, I'm thinking what can I try next because all these uh, you know experts in the medical field are not being able to help me uh, you know, am I going to be stuck with this forever? And eventually, uh, my pain gets so bad that the doctors uh, asked me to quit my job and be on bed rest forever. And uh, you know, this is so. I'm, you know, I have I have to quit my job. It feels like my life is coming to a standstill emotionally, physically, mentally. Uh, socially right and uh, it's a very frustrating place so I can't drive my kids to school anymore I can't uh, just be a regular mom to my kids forget working and you know I since I was stuck on bed I was doing a lot of reflecting on uh, how uh, you know when I was a kid I spent a big a, a big chunk of my early childhood in a boarding boarding school uh, it, it was a protestant uh, school in in a hill town uh, in north of india it's called nenital uh, you have to google it it's a beautiful beautiful place and so you know what i found is that i back in the boarding school days i i realized that you know here I am complaining to God and saying, what the heck is going wrong? Why aren't you helping me? Uh, I'm stuck here. What have I done wrong? Uh, you know, what do I, why do I deserve this? And I'm really angry at God. And it brought me back to my childhood days when I would be talking to God constantly. And I realized, wow, I haven't had these conversations with God in decades, right? And uh, let me give you a little, you know, at the Protestant school, at the boarding school, you know, uh, God was a, a, a regular feature in our lives. You know, right from the start uh, where we had breakfast, we said grace, uh, which meant something like, um, God bless this food and make us thankful. Amen. And then once we finished having the food we said for thy good grace we thank the lord amen right after breakfast we would go into chapel time and i have to say that was the best time of the day for me it was a stress-free time <laughs> there was no stress around at that time and you know you uh, you got to hear you got to sing hymns which was so inspiring so uplifting you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Or um, there was a really cute hymn, which I'm going to tell you. It went, ask, ask, ask. Uh, no, this was a different one. Sorry. It was lots of faces in the class, lots of classes in the school. Aren't we far too many for Jesus to look after? And then it went, no, for nobody else is just like me. I'm important to Jesus. And uh, the other hymn uh, was ask, 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 and it shall be given you. Seek, 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 and you shall find. Knock, 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 the door will open unto you. Your heavenly Father is so kind. He knows what is best for his children in body, soul, and mind. So ask, 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 
knock, 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 seek, and you shall find. Wow. You know, even saying that right now gives me chills. But here I was, you know, asking God, what the heck is going on? Why, you know, what have you done? Why are you being mean to me? Why am I, you know, subject to all of uh, this, uh, this suffering? And, uh, you know, it wasn't in the boarding school, it wasn't just the meal times and the chapel time. But, you know, my parents were based in Thailand. I'm talking about the late 70s. And I was in a hill, uh, little hill town in uh, up north in India. And so there was very little phone communication. There was none, actually. There was no communication except through air mail. And uh, so since I didn't have my parents around on a daily basis, you know, God became my parent. And so if I had any stress, or if I was really excited about something, or if I was selected to be in the basketball team, which I was, um, I would just have these conversations with God when I was, you know, uh, at night when it was uh, bedtime. I would, you know, sit and talk to God about different things. And I realized now here I am, haven't had a conversation in decades and uh, really mad and angry with God. And, uh, you know, I realized, wow, how disconnected I've become from uh, from my own creator and uh, you know how I you know consciously or subconsciously I've edged God out of my life saying hey I'm an adult now I can take care of myself so I'll take it from here <laughs> and this is where I've landed I'm in pain I'm I have a disease I my life is at a standstill and uh, now I'm re trying to re connect with God and reconnect with the, my own creator. And so, you know, it was a big aha moment. And I realized I didn't even have a proper altar in my house where I went daily to pray. And so, you know, I created a little altar, a, a nice little altar in my, in my house uh, then. And um, I, you know, started uh, doing daily prayers, daily you know, spending just two minutes and praying to God and saying, guide me, I don't know what to do, uh, show me the way, help me, forgive me, uh, all of that. And uh, it's interesting, you know, how right out around like two weeks after I'd been doing that, I got an email from, uh, from a friend saying, you know, there is a self-awareness seminar, would you like to, uh, would you like to come? And, you know, I really wasn't that interested because I was, I didn't know how that would help me, but I stayed open and I went to the seminar. Uh, and it was at that seminar that I heard uh, from the, the host about emotional freedom techniques, EFT, that, uh, you know, and how it might help me uh, get free from my disease and my pain. And I started applying this tool by myself, on myself, Googling it online. And within two months, I was completely free from my disease, from every single ache and pain in my body. And, uh, you know, it's been now uh, 10 years since I've been using this technique and my life went from being stuck on bed forever to, uh, you know, being pain free, discovering my purpose, discovering meaning and feeling so joyful, uh, discovering what it is that I was meant to do uh, for my life. And in, in the process also helping uh, thousands of others along the journey. And so, you know, what I realized is that uh, after working with thousands of people over the past decade and just even my own uh, experience, you know, uh, I was moving, you know, we, we are moving forward in our lives uh, without a solid foundation. And, you know, the foundation is that we are divine beings. We are children of God. We are the divine spark. We are source 
energy, spiritual beings in this physical body first. And that is our foundation. We, we are loved. We are supported. We are taken care of. Uh, you know, whatever we want, ask and it shall be given you. But what happens is I was asking, I said, gosh, I don't like this job. Uh, you know, I wish I could be in another job. And my voice said, uh, no, you can't get another job because nobody wants, you know, nobody will offer you this. And uh, I, st I stayed stuck at a job that was making me really unhappy because I was disconnected from the root of who I was and from the knowing that I'm loved, that I'm supported and my wishes will be granted. I just have to trust and, and take that step. But I didn't take the step, right? And that not taking that step and not trusting that I can have the job that I want and just, you know, look for it, go for it. I didn't even try because my voice said, you know, nobody's going to give you a job that offers flexi time. So just forget it. And so staying in that unhappy place and then creating more unhappiness for myself, for my family and, you know, the whole journey uh, forward. So that was the problem. The foundation of all problems is that we don't, we are disconnected from the truth of who we are. And, you know, we, we might say, yeah, but, you know, I am connected. I am, you know, spiritual and I am, uh, you know, I do have a strong faith. But it's like we have one eye on God and one eye, you know, we think, you know, uh, we have to just make it all happen. And if, if we don't see it, we, you know, we, we start uh, getting stressed. We start getting overwhelmed. We step into anxiety. And we all know that when we are, you know, in, in a constant state of fear and anger and unhappiness and dissatisfaction and unfulfilled and overwhelmed and resentful comparing ourselves not trusting ourselves it's stress on a daily basis and we know that 90 percent of all diseases and pain is coming from a place of stress so really the root of all issues i believe is this place of disconnection with god is this place of not being aware and not maintaining that connection as we step moment to moment, day to day into those meetings, into our experience, into the relationships that we have, into whatever the experiences, this vast uh, landscape of life that we move through, we are not constantly aware and maintaining that connection with God. And so there starts our issues, our problems, which create bigger problems and just kept keep getting bigger and bigger so you know i want to invite you and ask you and request you and plead with you uh, to you know what if you could on a day-to-day -day basis and i don't mean those you know those uh, you know once in a while that i was doing you know once in a while it's it's a in the, it's an indian festival okay let's let's talk to god let's pray to god uh, or there are these 10 days spiritual days uh, that are coming up right now. We have Navratri going on in in uh, in um, in the Indian uh, you know uh, festivals, and everybody is tuned in and praying and doing the ceremonies. And I'm and that's wonderful, right? We take this one special time. But what if you know you could do that on a daily basis? On a daily basis. As you step into the meeting, as you have that desire to do something, as you notice that you're frustrated and you're not happy, what if you could step into all the possibilities that you want to, uh, all the dreams and the goals that you want to, and or even challenges that come your way? What if you could remind yourself that God is with me at all times? You may not call it God, you may call it higher force, divine inspiration, divine uh, consciousness, right? Whatever you want to call it, but just reminding yourself on a daily basis that wherever I am is perfect and I know God is here with me. And uh, as I move forward, I know that I will be supported, I'm loved and I'm guided and, you know, things will work out for me because I am made in the image of God, I am a child of God, I am that divine spark. Um, and the bigger force is 
right behind me every moment, every day. So what if, what if you gave it a go? What if for the next 10 days, try it, you know, try to move forward with constantly reminding yourself who you are, because that was the awakening that happened for me, remembering that chapel time, and it wasn't just chapel time, it, you know, it was just every day, every different times of the day, it was, you know, taking time to remind ourselves that God is with us, and, uh, you know, try it, give it a go, and see how that begins to bring uh, more peace, no matter what challenge you are in right now, whether you're feeling stuck in pain or anxiety or some relationship issue or you're frustrated at, in your job, right? What if you could remind yourself today, right now, that the truth of me, the truth is that I am the child of God, I am a spark of the divine, and I have whatever I need to move forward that I'm, I'm supported, I'm guided. And if you could try that for the next 10 days or whatever time, who knows? You know, I believe that if you did give it a go, then you'd find that your life will move forward with a lot more peace, a lot more calm, a lot more clarity, uh, you know, more joyous, more feeling alive, more feeling empowered, and with that, you know, you can truly, truly break free from anything that's keeping you stuck and create the life you truly, truly want. Things, not immediately, but over time, uh, as you develop this muscle of being aware and maintaining this connection with the divine, as you develop this muscle every day, tuned in, tapped in, to divine consciousness, to the, the, the greater something, as Joe Vitale calls it, um, the great something, tuned into that, um, you know, how would your life be different? And uh, how would that change the perspective that you have right now, no matter what your situation is? So, you know, I hope uh, this was helpful. I can see my dad is online. Hello, Papa. Uh, I can see Natalie is here. Thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining. And um, if this resonates with you, please uh, like it. Please share it. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you next week again. I can't see everyone who's here. So hello, everyone. Um, and thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you'll join me again for another inspiring story next week, Thursday, same time, uh, same day. And um, thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.